was uh, called the band Dixie for them, and I had uh, the first seven times or six times I ran him, he finished third. And uh, then I had another horse for, uh, that Alan sent me as a horse called Tactical Delight. But uh, prior to that, I'd had uh, I'd raced one or two of my own. Um, I had my good horse die a number of years ago, and that, uh, that kind of mentally set me back. It was uh, devastating to me. But uh, I was down to... Uh, I was down to one horse, and uh, I uh, said, "Alan, I call Alan." I said, "Alan, I need to get to, I got to get me another horse." He said, uh, well, "Call the farm, and uh, you'll talk to Craig Wheeler. He's a farm manager, and uh, tell him, and that I said for them to send you a horse." Uh, and I added, when I did call him, I added right away. That is the way Alan put it. But I, I added that, and. Uh, I, you know, I didn't want them thinking I was trying to be a smart aleck, a wise guy. I said, I'm making this phone call under the direction of, uh, of Alan Jerkins, and, uh, and uh, the only thing I added to it was right away. And uh, they did. They sent me this big gray horse, he's a two-year-old and uh, untried, and uh, the, the rest of it is uh, movie, uh, movie fiction. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> even seem like it's real. <laughs> well, Pete, we know that Delightful Kiss can flat-out run but he's not the friendliest horse around the barn, is he? No, he's uh, he's got a, uh, around the barn. He's very he's not friendly at all. Uh, he will kick you. Uh, I, I mean, when we're working on him, uh, he'll kick you in a New York minute, and he'll bite you. Mm. And uh, I've been the recipient of one or two of of, of his uh, of his act. Uh, he kicked me in the leg one day, and uh, and I was grazing him, and I slipped in the, on the grass because it was wet. And it scared him, and he wheeled around, and he started uh, running backwards. And I had a knot tied in the shank, and I come to the knot, and that's as far as he could go. I wasn't going to turn him loose, mm. but it pulled all the ligaments in my uh, in my right wrist, and uh, it, it to this to this day it still bothers me. Wow. And uh, he hit me in the head uh, upside my eye, cut my eye open uh, with his head. But I haven't had anything recently. But I don't mind it. Uh, it keeps running that way. He can <laughs> kick me or bite me, whatever he yeah. wants to do. <laughs> it's all right. Pete, you used the one-mile Hal's Hope on opening day at Gulfstream as a prep for this afternoon, and here he is, the big gray railing wide on the turn. Pete, this was an awfully good prep. Talk about this effort in the Hal's Hope, if you would. Well, um, I, prior to the, uh, going out to the paddock, I, I talked to the rider, and uh, I said, now, you're a horseman, and I said, I want you to understand that uh, we're going to treat this uh, as a, uh, uh, a not as a uh, blood sucker. I'm not we're going to run, run him into the ground in this race. I said, if he can win, I'll be very, very happy. If he's second or third, I'll still be as happy. I don't want to knock him out um, in this race uh, because I have my eyes on the million-dollar race. That's what I'm aiming for. That's been my goal for the last couple of months. And uh, I said, he, he's training good. And his last work, um, I, I could have changed and told him uh, uh, something different because his last work prior to that race was outstanding. And I, I knew that uh, he was going to put in a super performance, but I still didn't want to drain him uh, coming up to this race. And because we've been traveling, <clears throat> we've been in Frisco and uh, Los Angeles and down here and then back to Kentucky, and he's got more air miles. Air, American Airlines ought to give him a, a, a free ticket. And uh, I, so I just didn't want to knock him out and, uh, in that race. And as it was, uh, you, you'll even watch it. He just slapped him is what, what I asked him to do. Uh, he didn't hit him. He just slapped him. Because, but I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 a component of a, a, an advocate, I should say, of whipping horses. Uh, I, I never did it in my, I never did it in my couple of years of uh, uh, riding all the 25 years. Because uh, uh, I've had a, I've had a great saying that I copied from a fabulous trainer, Horatio Lou. He used to say, uh, "The whip is for encouragement, not for punishment." Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been my philosophy uh, my whole life. Uh, I, that was told to me when I was a young, uh, 16 or 17 years old, when I ran for a rush show. And uh, I follow that with uh, my horses uh, in, in my training program now. Um, Pete did now. Calvin Burrell rode for you that day. What did he say to you after the race? And does it appear 
You've watched Delightful Kiss every day since the House Hope. Does it appear that the House Hope took too much out of him? No, 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 no. He came back out of it very good. Uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he puts a lot into his, into his races, and uh, we have a, uh, a constant problem with building his blood up. And, um, but we, I, I do it. I'm aware of it, and, and uh, I have a series of ingredients that are, uh, go into his, uh, into his feed, and, and plus other things that the veterinarians can help us with. Um, that was apparent to me when I first got him as a two-year-old, and uh, I was lucky enough to, uh, to find that out about him. And so I'm ever vigilant uh, with that uh, to keep his blood. And, and it's, 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 it's not right quite as, as it was uh, for that race over there, but it's just a tick below that. I think uh, it, it will have no uh, influence on his race. I just think he'll, he'll put in a super race. He couldn't, I couldn't hold him down this morning. We jogged him and come off the racetrack, and he was just uh, feeling and playing and acting real good. And uh, when he gets this close to a race, he does get very difficult and, and, and nasty as hell when we wash him. Um, he doesn't like cold water, so I use warm water or hot water. Um, he's he's moody in that, not moody, but he just does. He's a light skinned horse, and you can't uh, you can't rub on him or be uh, aggressive around him. He's uh, kind of tender with, with with his feelings uh, with, when you're working on him. But uh, he was a son of a gun this morning, uh, uh, trying to kick the groom and uh, bite me, and uh, About he, that. He, <laughs> he and he's tough. He's a big horse, and he's real, real. He's a real strong horse. He's a very, very big, powerful horse. And you walk him once around the shed, and uh, it's like doing a day's work. I mean, that's how strong he is. <laughs> Pete, you talked about it earlier. You've traveled all over the country with him. But in the video we took a look at a few moments ago, and we saw him galloping back after the house hope, he seems to be carrying a lot of flesh. He seems to handle those cross-country trips very well. Physically, how's he doing <clears throat> coming up to this afternoon's race? He does. He does handle the traveling good, and he does carry a lot of flesh. He's, uh, when I ran him in uh, uh, Turfway, it was a mile and a half, and that morning uh, I'm getting ready to put him on the van. I said, oh, Christ. I said, uh, I looked at him, and I said, Jesus, guys, I, I just, I don't know whether I've done enough with him uh, to go a mile and a half. He is, he, you know, he's scared you looking at him because he's, he's a big, strong, uh, gutted horse, a big belly. He carries a lot of flesh, and I said, geez, I hope. I was worried whether I'd done enough with him, and uh, that, that's a good observation that you're making. Uh, but he runs that way. He's, uh, he's like that this morning. I mean, he never, he never turns his head to, to the feet up. He eats at all times. He has uh, yet to leave an oath, <laughs> and the day that he leaves an oath, I'm going to call five veterinarians because <laughs> you, you can bet that there's something drastically wrong. Final question, Pete. With If there are no late scratches, you will have post-12 today. Right. The, the only other horse to win from post-12 since Gulfstream reconfigured the main track at a mile and an eighth on dirt was Big Brown winning the Florida Derby last year. And, of course, he used his natural speed to get a position. Well, yeah, that's completely different than my situation. He was in front all the way, saved ground all the way. And uh, the, the 12 didn't bother him. As a matter of fact, um, uh, when you've got a horse like that there, uh, if I had a choice, I'd rather be on the outside. The chances are you're not going to get bothered. And uh, a horse that's got a lot of speed, if there's nobody on to the right of them, uh, they'll break real good usually, and which uh, Big Brown did. And uh, But I'm un under a different circumstance. Now, I'm going to be last uh, or next to last, whatever it might happen to be. And uh, I've got 12 to circle. Uh, that's late in the race. He broke and, and took care of the, the 11 that was on the inside of him immediately upon leaving the gate, Big Brown. So uh, it's two different circumstances, one that's coming from way out of it and the other that it took immediate uh, uh, position in first, being in first or second, wherever he was. And uh, it, 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 the 12 didn't hurt him at all, didn't hurt Big Brown at all. <clears throat> I'm not going to make an alibi. I don't think it will bother my horse. I think he'll do today what he did the other day. Well, Pete, we have enjoyed very much having you on this morning. We appreciate your time. All the best later this afternoon with Delightful Kiss and the Million Dollar Sunshine Millions Classic, and we'll look forward to speaking with you again very soon. 
All right, thank you. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to doing it again myself. Thank okay. you, Chief. Pete Please, Anderson, absolutely. ladies and yes. gentlemen. This yeah. is a wonderful story. One of the stories Because of the Pete really didn't have much yep. left in the barn. Yeah. He was going to have a lot of time to play golf. Yeah. And Alan Jerkins, <laughs> who we have known over the decades to have helped out so many people right. in the business, That's so right. many young riders. When Alan Jerkins <laughs> makes a call for you, things That's are taken nice. care of, and he ends up with Delightful Kiss, that is good. who has been simply amazing. The one you always have to beat when you're in the race against him. He really is. You know, so. winning stakes literally yep. all over the country. And surfaces. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. it doesn't matter with this yeah. horse. And I'll tell you, <clears throat> I liked this horse in the Breeders' Cup Marathon last year. I thought that uh, he had a wonderful chance in there, and he ended up flattening out to run a reasonably close fourth that day. But I think Delightful Kiss may have had a legitimate excuse that day because